Let's go over how to print our list in a linked list. We have to go over this because there's going to be a, a certain portion of the code here that you're going to see a lot because it's going to be the same feature in order to traverse through the list. If we're printing it, if we happen to be searching for something in it, if we happen to be try to search for something and delete something within the linked list, you're going to see this pop up quite a bit. So that's why I'm going painstakingly into this. First, I'm showing you the code, and then we'll go over it step by step on exactly how the pointers are all getting used and loved and everything else like that. So there's many versions of doing this. Okay, We're, There's some that use a while loop. There's some that use a for loop, which I happen to use. Uh, there is an iterator format that we use in the C++ SDLs for this. But still, no matter what, many forms of it. It's going to use the cursor, which you've seen before, and our overloaded C out, which is actually at the bottom here, for our specific node. How do we call it? Very simple, just the name of the linked list and then dot print list. And then here is the print list function. Again, I'm going to show you visually what's going on here, but notice there's two sections. Honestly, the first one, I'm not going to go over too much, but this is a check to see if the list is empty. If the list is empty, we just have some type of display, and then we return, and then we're all done. It's the for loop. Things start getting a little bit interesting. And yes, this for loop is not exactly incrementing integers right now, but it is incrementing what our pointers are going to be doing. Notice there's three of them that we use here. It's, we're using front to have us first assigned to the front of the list. We're using cursor, which is going to be the one that's going to be used and moved quite a bit. And then while this is a pointer, it's checking to see if we've gotten to the end of the list using null pointer in this particular case. So that's what you're going to start seeing as I go through it visually here in a moment. So as we are starting off, you've seen this image before. <laughs> you know that we're going to have a front pointer that's going to be pointing to the front node of the list. You know that we're going to have a rear pointer, pointer that's pointing to the rear of the list. And you know that at the very end, it's going to be pointing to null or null PTR. So that part you've seen before. You know that we've been using some other you know, pointers as well, but you're really going to see it this time. So again, this code that I'm showing here is literally the step-by-step -step of what the previous page and that entire for loop was. All I'm doing is breaking it down and showing you the visual representation of what is happening. So that first item inside the for loop was that cursor equals front. So now you have both front and cursor pointing to the same node. That makes sense, right? Because I want to go start from here, uh, display Angela, then Jack, then Peter, then Chris, and then stop or continue if there were other nodes. So I want to start off from the front. Okay, fine. Next, I'm going to check to see, and that's our condition in a for loop, that middle item there, we have cursor does not equal null pointer. Well, it certainly doesn't because it actually happens to look at a real value called Angela in that case. Because that is true, we go ahead and go ahead and display using the overloaded C out for node. We go ahead and display what cursor is per currently pointing at. So that would be Angela and what that's 251. Okay. The next part is the most interesting part. And you know the third part of our for loop is the iteration. Well, that's exactly what we're doing. So what we're going to do is we're going to use cursor's previous, here's cursor, here's that link for cursor, because cursor has access to the whole kit and caboodle here. Cursor's link, I want you to reset to whatever it's pointing to, to now cursor. So now cursor moved, has moved up one. We're going to use this feature in order to literally move cursor to the next node, to the next node, after we've checked to make sure that that next node is not equal to null. And it's not. Because otherwise, it'd be pointing to null pointers. So notice once we get to the end, this is not going to happen because it will be equal to null pointer. But anyway, so we go ahead and increment up one. So again, the only change between here and here is moving up. And I'm using that little link right there from one node to the other. Then we do the exact same thing over and over again. If you can believe that, that's why we're using a for loop. 
it's going to be, and I'm going to scroll down here because really I could just do these three things over again. But so I now have a new node that I'm looking at. Front pointer has nothing to do with it. Notice front gets used just once. That's the exact same thing for initialization for a for loop, right? That's exactly why it's placed there. I never go back to front because I'm trying to go from basically left to right. So now I'm at a new node. I'm going to check that it's not equal to null pointer. It isn't because it act has an actual value. I go ahead and display it again. What do you think I'm going to do next? You're right. I'm going to increment again. Okay. Now with that incrementation, I do the same things over again. So I'm going to try to scroll down here. Yeah, okay. Cursor equals cursor arrow link. So now I've moved up to the next one. Again, I'm literally using the links in between. The highlights will show me here or help me out here to get you to move to the next node. That's why the links are there. The links are to help you connect to the next node in the linkless train, as I'll call it, in this. Uh, same things over again. I'm looking to see if it's null. It's not fine. Go ahead and display it. Move up one. Uh, is it null? No. I still have the last value, which is Chris. I still have the last value that is Chris. Great. Move up one. I move up one. Now, cursor is literally pointing to null or null pointer. Now I have to stop because it is literally pointing to null pointer. That's how we, so that traversal is going to happen a lot. Each time I was displaying something, to, frankly, to the screen. I could do other things. I could uh, try to find something and have to do something with it. Has value is a function that's going to come up here in a little bit. That's going to do the exact same code, but as soon as it finds a value or the value that we're looking for, it does something else. But that for loop that's, that's been shown is really, really important and used quite a bit when traversing through a list, a linked list.